Blackbird Joe look at themselves. Can't they hit? Yeah, Charlie Powers likes to look good for the crowd. Make it easy, Charlie. Boy, there's only supposed to be a show for the rules here. You're lucky we've got these mitts on. I'll break your head. Charlie's hitting him too hard, Dugan. Can't you make him stop? Oh, don't worry about me. Ain't a good old lad. He can take care of himself. Charlie. I got ten dollars as you can take both of them. <laughs> Come on, hey! <laughs> For now we're in. What you're trying to do? Kill him? Just show him who's boss in this ring, that's all. Ladies and gentlemen! This exciting exhibition is declared a draw. Remember when they cheered that way for us? I still say you can lick either one of them. Yeah, maybe with a sledgehammer. Ladies and gentlemen, we come now to the next exciting event. Johnny Powers, contender for the world's heavyweight title, challenges any man here to match pugilistic skills with him. And to any man who can last four rounds with him, the management will award the sum of $200 in cash. Yeah. $200? Really? Yeah, yeah. Bucks. Don't you start getting no ideas, Joe. Oh, come on, you could stay four rounds with him in your sleep. And to make this even more sporting, I personally will cover all bets at 51 odds that no man can last the four round limit. Oh. Oh. Why do you know you try? You're bigger than Joe. Joe. Little Joe's Wait, right, boss. Come on. Look, oh, you ain't gonna know. Name, sir? Horse cart, right? Contending for the two hundred dollar purse, horse cart ride. I tell you, just keep hitting him till he falls down. Hit him till he falls down. I'll be lucky if I can keep getting up. Will you stop worrying? This is going to be the easiest $200 we ever made. If it's that easy, how come you ain't fighting? Because this is your night. All right, five to one odds on Charlie Powers to win. Make your bets with a timekeeper here. Better. Ten bucks, mister, on Hoss Cartwright. Ten, Ten more on Hoss. Come on. There you go. <laughs> I don't know what they're up to. You know that Charlie Powers doesn't look too happy. Neither do I, in case you ain't noticed. Come on, you haven't got a thing to worry about. What's up, Charlie? Ross, 
He wants Hank to take this fight. What? You heard her, Dugan. I'm not wearing myself out on these small-town hicks. But it's not fair, Ross. Charlie's made Hank fight the last eight challengers. And you know he's not supposed to take anything harder than exhibitions. Charlie, she's right. You know Hank here ain't been feeling so good. Who you grooming for the championship, me or this two-bit has-been? I said I'm not fighting a hick, and that's it. Nothing to it, Hank. You can whip that big boy with one hand. Just play with him for a while, then drop him. Tell you what, there'll be another $50 for that chicken ranch of yours. Ross, I don't think I should. Look, I got a lot of bets down already, see? Now you take this fight, or you and Ruby can look for another meal ticket. Now that's it, chum. Don't do it, darling, please. I'll be all right, sweetheart. Don't you worry. Here we go, us. Ladies and gentlemen, your indulgence, please. There will be a substitution. All right, all right. All right. In place of the challenger, we will have that former great personage of the ring and still formidable pugilist, Ank the Kilcarney Killer, Kelly. Six of one, half a dozen another. And in this corner, the Virginia City strong boy himself, Os Cartwright. affair and may the best man win. Don't worry, young man. Hank will go easy on you. Just give the crowd a good fight. This bout will be governed by the London prize ring rules. With each knockdown ends around. However, going to your knees does not constitute a knockdown. Both fighters will be given 30 seconds rest between rounds, eight seconds to come to scratch. Failure to make scratch forfeits the bout and the stand a man is the winner. Do you understand the rules? Yes, sir, I understand. Do your best to beat me if you can, by. That's why I'll be fighting you. Now, there'll be no eye gouging, air pulling, elbowing, or wrestling. You got that? There'll be no biting or kicking. That's been outlawed, too. I don't know what this game's coming to. All right, corners. Good luck. Time! Come to scratch and fight! Him off. I hit him with everything but an axe. That body's made out of pig iron. Are you all right? Am I all right? Yeah. 
Yeah, all right. Well, if you're holding back, you're gonna have to get in there and hit him. I'll try, I'll try. Look, try faking it. Fake it with the left hand and hit him with the right. I'll try, Joe. Oh, it's time, gentlemen. Come to scratch your fight. Rant to. Go on in there, Kitty. Come on. That's it, Dugan. What do you mean? He's not just out. He's almost dead. Consciousness yet. Ma'am. Ma'am. I just. I just want to tell you that I'm. I'm sorry. I. Sorry? Sorry? My husband's lying up there dying. And you're sorry. You're nothing but an animal. times in a man's life that he feels deeply for a person. There's nothing he can do to help him. Many times. Hank Kelly is a professional fighter. He knows what the risks of his profession are. Besides, you didn't set out to hurt him. Pa's right, Hoss. He's partially right. Of course, it's a fact that Hank Kelly is a professional fighter. But when he hit me and kept hitting me, I lost my temper. When I came up after him, I, I came up to kill him. I wanted to kill him. I hit him as hard as I could, and that ain't right. Maybe I am just an animal, like Miss Kelly said. Hoss, Mrs. Kelly was very upset, naturally. But don't let what she said upset you. Why don't you go upstairs and get yourself some rest? Good night, sleep will do you good. Hmm? Yeah. Good night. That's it. So 
whole thing started over a silly $200 bet. Downstairs, I couldn't sleep either, so I came out for a while. You know. Hey, did you? Hey, did you hear about Charlie Edderman? He had a had a little boy. But they were surprised they had to hate girls. I don't think they expected a boy any time. Yeah. yeah Cute nice. little fellow, you ought to see him. Charlie's lucky. Sorry. For what? And nothing to do with it, Joe? Heck, I didn't. I was the one that pushed you in there. I thought the thing was just a big joke. I didn't. Oh, baloney. Baloney. Look, if I hadn't wanted to go in that ring, I wouldn't have gone in there. Dad would run it. There wasn't nothing you or them other two yews could have done to push me in that ring. I wanted to go in there. See, that's the problem, Joe. I wanted to get in there. Why don't we not talk about it, huh? No, that ain't no good. I need to talk about it. I, I've been thinking about it all night. And that ain't done no good. I'll tell you something. I learned something, Joe. I learned something about myself. Something I don't like. I reckon every man's got it in him. It's some kind of an instinct or something that he's got down deep inside him that it'll make him do things that, that he wouldn't ordinarily do, except when he's scared. See, that's what I don't like. I got in that ring with Kelly and with Dad Bernie, he hurt me. bouncing his fists off of me, and, and it hurt, and he scared me. He scared me. That's the thing, see. He scared me bad enough, it brung up that thing from down deep somewhere that, that made me want to tear him up. Tear him to pieces, kill him. Kill him. Do you understand what I'm saying, Joe? Do you, you know what I mean? I think I do understand. Mr. Cartwright? No, thank you, Hopsing. I got plenty, Hopsing. Thanks. Mr. Horse, he not eat this morning. He say he have to go into Virginia City too early to wait for breakfast. I know. Poor Mr. Horse. What's the matter? He is all worried. Well, it's a long story, Hopsing. I get. I'd like to see Mr. Hoss Cartwright. My name is Ross Dugan. Mr. Hoss not home. I tell Mr. Ben Cartwright. Come in, please. Mr. Ben Cartwright, is that correct, sir? Yes, Mr. Dugan. Mr. Ross Dugan, sir. Manager, trainer, exhibitor par excellence. Oh. Pleasure, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, yes, sir. Your son Ross is not here, sir? 
No, I'm afraid he had to go into town early. Oh, I know this young man from the fight. Yeah, how are you? I believe in getting brought down to business, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Dugan, would you sit down? I'd like to say we're all very sorry to hear what happened to Mr. Kelly, of course. Has he regained consciousness? Unfortunately not, sir. And if he shouldn't, it might prove to be a great loss to me and to the world of pugilism. We've been together almost 12 years now, sir, ever since I rescued him from the obscurity of the coal mines in Wales. Oh, what a great lad he was, too. He liked losing my very own son. Well, I can understand that. I, I'm sure you must know how Haas feels, too, thinking he's responsible for it all. There is a way your son could have told Mr. Cartwright. That's what I came here to talk about. How's that? By fighting. By giving me and Charlie Powers the satisfaction of another fight. <sighs> Mr. Dugan, if that's the reason for your call today, I'm afraid you've, you've wasted your time. I came here to make a match, sir. The whole town wants a match. Why, don't you see the sensational thing it will be, sir? Why, Charlie Powers contender for the title versus Oss Cartwright, Virginia City's own strong boy. The man who knocked Aunt Kelly senseless with one punch. Oh, look, if it's a split of the bat and you... Good what's day, that? Mr. Dugan. Watch up, man. So you don't think this is the end of it, do you? Why, there's more ways than one to make your son fight. I figured to be around. How's... You regained consciousness a few hours ago. I'm afraid that your punches did more than just knock him out, Hoss. You see, uh, he can never fight again. Yeah. Would it be all right if I went in there to see him? Sure. Matter of fact, it might be good for him to have someone with him. Well, his wife is seeing Mr. Dugan. Don't make it too long, though. Thanks, Doc. Mr. Kelly? Oh, come on in. How you doing? I'll be all right. Got a hard head. Well, I'll tell you, you sure gave me a scare. We're even. You gave me a proper walloping. Oh, no. That, that was just a lucky punch. Or unlucky. I guess it's according to which feller's looking at it. I didn't sleep too well last night. I was sleeping enough for both of us. When I, when I think what I've done to you, You've done nothing, lad. Nothing. I was a good fighter once, and with the proper breaks, I might have been champion. You want to tell me about it? Yeah, what's to tell? I was a miner. Migrated from the potato fields of Ireland to the coal mines of Wales. <laughs> And I met Ross Dugan. Ross Dugan. He was a down at the Hales promoter from London. And somewhere he'd heard about that big Irish lad who beat everyone in the mines. And he came hunting for me, swearing that he could make me champion of the whole ruddy Commonwealth. So what happened? Yeah, he was a big, powerful ox. He was a ratty little nobody. We couldn't raise the kind of public interest championship bouts demanded. 
Still, anything was better than the coal, and we made fair money. Yes, I beat and fought some of the best men in the British Isles. I was riding pretty high when we came to New York. <laughs> and then I met my Ruby and married her. As lovely a Colleen as ever came from the old country. I was gonna make her a queen, I was. In those days, I thought the easy money would never end. But everything ends, doesn't it, lad? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon it does. But you were a great fighter. I remember reading all those stories about you. Yes, well, when I burned myself out for old Ross, there was Charlie, another hungry lad to take my place. So I reckon you'll be quitting the ring now, huh? Quitting now? Quit? I'm a pug. I don't know nothing else. The doc says you gotta quit. Look, Hoss, you ever have a dream? Huh? I mean something you really wanted. Well, me and Ruby, we've been saving every penny to buy a little ranch in California, and we figured by the time we got to San Francisco on this tour, we'd have enough money to buy it. But, Hank, you, you can't keep on fighting. Well, it's that or lose the farm. Forget the dream. Ruby's begged me to quit, but I can't. At least this way, if anything happens to me, she'll get the farm. Look, Hank, I've been stashing away a little money, and I... Thanks, Hoss. I couldn't take nothing I didn't earn. Besides, Ross Dugan will pay for me expenses and doctor bills. And there's $500 he's keeping for me towards the farm. Yeah, I'll get the rest of it somehow. <laughs> Medical care. Why, you must be punchier than your old man to come here with that idea. But you owe Hank that much. At least that. I owe that stumble bum nothing. Hank has given you everything. Everything he was and had. Sure. Thanks to him, I've lost practically our old bankroll. Ross, he needs help. That's your problem. All right. You're holding $500 of Hank's money. The money for the farm. I'll take that. That money's gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? G-O-N-E, gone. It went with my own bankroll on the fight. I bet that is a special favor to Hank. I figured to get him his stinking little farm faster that way. Then he lost. You had no right to bet Hank's money without asking him. It's every cent we had in this world. Have you got the money to hire a lawyer and take me to court? Oh, look, ducky. Yes. I'm a businessman, see? And Hank was bad business for me. On the other hand, I'm not a heartless sort. Let's say you, or Hank, was able to convince Oscar Cartwright he ought to fight Charlie here. Ooh, think of the gate that kind of a fight would bring, eh? Why, I might be able to dig up enough money to pay Hank's doctor bills. Maybe even another 500 for him. How could Hank or I convince Haas Cartwright to fight? Oh, there are ways. Why, your Cartwright's taking this thing pretty bad. And <laughs> these country yokels, they've all got consciences as big as freight wagons. Why, you could cry a little. You know? What you say, Ruby? Who's more important to you? Ask Cartwright or your own dear husband? I once called Hoss Cartwright an animal. But I was wrong because I was afraid to face up to the truth. You're the animal. <laughs> Thank you. 
Got that off pretty good, Dugan. Well, I was almost bawling, cause poor old Hank lost all his money. You didn't bet a dime of it. You want that fight, don't you? Well, sure I want it. We get what we want, people like you and me, don't we? My, my, we're having a bit of a conscience fit now, eh? When I first started throwing Hank to the dogs to make you champ, I didn't get no complaints. Now, you shut up, Dugan. What? Sure, I done my share of dirty things to get ahead in this game. But I can't forget what it was like to be hungry. Seemed like all my life I was cold and scared and on the run. And I saw others turn weak and go down grabbing for nothing but a handful of air. And I swore right then that I'd never be one of them. Like Hank. Oh, you ain't like Hank. When I saw my first boxing ring, I knew then I was looking at the only hope I had of ever making something of myself. And I'm not going to give it up. We should have been in San Francisco by now, getting ready to fight Camel Heenan for the American title. Well, it's not my fault. How was I to know some Western bumpkin was going to beat Kelly? Oh, if we want to fight the champ, Charlie, we got to match his purse money. $5,000. Virginia City was going to be easy pickings. Instead of that, we've lost half our money. What well, was you thought Hank could take all these local yokels? It was you who wouldn't fight Cartwright, remember? Well, I want to fight him now. Oh, we're dead, Charlie, without that purse money. Oh, it's beat Cartwright or a handful of air. Nobody's going to stand in my way, Dugan. Nobody. First Cartwright, then San Francisco, and then London, and the heavyweight championship of the world. That's the way I like to hear you talk, Charlie. Nobody can stop us now. <laughs> That's Dugan's proposition. I think there's an easier solution. What's that, Mr. Cartwright? We give you and Hank $500 and pay the medical bills. Hank would never accept charity. <laughs> but, ma'am, it's not charity. But see, Miss Kelly, I, I feel responsible for Hank. And I'd like to do something to make it up to you. I can't accept charity. Not for him or for myself. Now, Mrs. Kelly, your husband is a professional fighter. My son is not. Wait, wait, Paul. Look, Miss Kelly, I'll do anything in the world for you and Hank. Anything. I'll give you anything I got. I'll work. But I ain't gonna fight again. Ever. I think you would. I can't say I really blame you. I was unfair to you. I only ask you to forgive me. Miss Kelly, what, what, what about the, the medical bills? You know, you owe something to Hank, too. And he need never know. Thank you. Thank you. I'll order those two for as I talk to Doc Martin. What do you think the Kellys are going to say when they find out you're paying up the bills? Well, there ain't no reason for them to know, is there? Well, I guess not. You gonna go up and see Hank? I'd like to, but I'm afraid Miss Kelly wouldn't be overjoyed to see me. Well, I'll meet you over to Silver Dollar. I have a quick beer before we go home. Try. Right. See you in a minute. Bye. Hey, little Joe. How you doing, Bert? Have a beer, Cosmo. Hi, little Joe. How's it going? Yeah. Little Joe, uh. What about Hoss? 
Yeah, what about us? Well, uh, Is he gonna fight Charlie Powers? <laughs> no, I should he? Uh, Smitty here says he'll fight. I say he won't. Yeah, but you two guys are doing an awful lot of talking about something none of your business. Well, most of the town's taking sides, little Joe. There's lots of coin rolling around that says horse can lick that professional fight. And a lot <laughs> yeah. that says horse is plain scared to fight. You saying that, Bert? I didn't say he was scared. I I'm going to put my money on him when he fights Charlie Powers. Yeah, you both can save your money. It's my brother horse isn't going to fight anybody, you understand? We understand. But what about Charlie Powers? He's going around town saying he's going to bust horse right in two. Charlie Powers got a big mouth. Hey, there's Hey. You see what I see? I sure do. Come on. Yokel, I think we have some business to settle. What, what business? Fight business. How would tomorrow afternoon suit you? Same place, same ring. Wouldn't suit me at all, Mr. Powers. When would you like to fight in then, eh? I ain't gonna fight him no place, no time. The fact is, I'm, I'm through the fight, and that's all there is to it. What he means is he's yelling. There's what he's scared of. Charlie Powers, the man that's going to flatten a champion. Soon as I can get him to meet me in San Francisco. <laughs> Charlie Powers got horse caught right cornered in the street. He's trying to push a fight. Well, there's only one thing left. Joe, you coming home? Boss, I got some things to take care of in town. Go on home, little horse caught right. We don't want you to get hurt. <laughs> For a big man, you're all air, caught right. <laughs> Crazy little Joe, that fella's a professional, and he outweighs you by a ton. You think my brother's yellow, mister? I think all you Cartwrights are yellow. So you turned and walked away from him. Yep. Walked off. Well, that... That took courage. The hardest dead burn thing I ever had to do in my life. Well, just the same, I'm glad you did it. Yeah. If you could have seen the expression on little Joe's face. Well, Joseph is young, and you know how impulsive he is. When he's had a chance to think it out, he'll be as proud of you as I am. I hope so. Hey, I was going up to the north pasture when you came. Keep you company? Huh? Yeah. Joe. What happened to you? Hoss, come on down. Hobson! Hobson, get some hot water and some soap and some alcohol. Yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Let's get some brandy. Yes. What happened? I made a big mistake. I saw him on. Swung on Charlie Powers. <sighs> Keep making wisecracks about Hoss. I lost my temper. <sighs> what did he work me over?
Charlie Powers, huh? What I'm saying. It's like a bull. Charlie Powers, next champion of these United States, is buying the refreshments, gentlemen. Step up to the bar. Hold it, hold it. Horse cart rides in town, and he's heading this way, looking for Charlie Powers. Did you see him yourself, boy? Sure did, mister. And I never seen him look like that before. <laughs> Keep going in this way. I came here for two reasons. Number one is Kelly's five hundred dollars. No, see here, you. Give it to him. What? I said give him the money. There's my first fighter. Remember, the odds are five to one. You're covered, Yokel. What's the other reason? A little gift for my little brother. your fight right now. Come on. Charlie Powers and Horse Cartwright, they're tangling in the silver dollar. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. Hey, Kelly, you get back in that bed. You're a sick man. Yeah, I never felt better in my life. I've been waiting five years to see Charlie Powers get his lumps, and I wouldn't be missing this for the world. <laughs>
Charlie. Slug him. What do you think? Got, you still got that money? I sure do, horse, right here. Five hundred dollars. At five to one, that's twenty-five hundred dollars. <laughs> Mr. Carter. Oh no, Hoss. We can't be taking this. You won it. Hank, you want it. It's your money. It's a 500. You had riding on me. It's, it's just growed a little, that's all. Goodbye, man. Goodbye. Yeah. Hoss, what can I say to thank you? Ma'am, you just made my whole day right then. <laughs> ben, you've got a wonderful son. Thank you. And you're quite a man yourself. But stay in the middleweight division. You're a chump there. I'll take your advice. I knew you, big lug. Listen, if you ever get the notion you'd like to be heavyweight champion of the world... You're in the chicken raising business from now on, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, champ, let's get along home. We have some post holes you might try to flex your muscles on. Yeah, and since you're so big and strong, I think I'll just sit there and watch you. You're my idol. <laughs> 